and we want you to have faith in God. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Tell somebody that. Tell him that. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on Tell him that. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up. Come on, one more time. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's oh, yes, he is. Now, if you believe that, put those hands together and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated, praise team. You can sit down. No, I don't want him. I just want you to tell him what the song was saying. The song was saying, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. And that's the truth. Don't give up on God. Never give up on God because when you lose your hope in God, you've lost all hope. It's gone. Because if God can't do it, it can't be done. Oh, yes, I know that's true. If God can't do it, it can't be done. Whatever it is, if it's finance, if God can't do it, it can't be done. If it's a relationship problem, God, if you don't do it, it can't be done. God, if you don't fix it, it won't be fixed. Fix me today, oh God. Fix me today, Lord. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. It is a beautiful day. This is the Lord, the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to make sure that we rejoice and do what? Be glad in it. Paul was in prison, but yet he said rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. He was locked up, had been shipwrecked, beat up, robbed. Some of y'all ain't never been robbed before, Kenny. <laughs> y'all was on the other end doing the robbing, some of y'all. But it's bad when you get robbed, robbed, beat up, shipwrecked, talked about, drugged through the mud, reputation messed up. Y'all got to read about Paul more. Uh, past Pastor Darvell, they don't recognize Paul's reputation among the uh, the apostles was mud. They didn't like him, but that didn't stop him from doing the work of the Lord. That didn't stop the Lord from using him, and that won't stop the Lord from using you. Sometimes people talk about you, and you didn't really even do whatever it was they said that you did. They just didn't like you. And if you live in life and you think, Sister Kim, everybody's going to like you, I got news for you. It's people right now that's looking for you, looking for your demise. They love it when you go down. <laughs> Somebody looking for you to go down right now. Right now, they're thinking about, yeah, he think he's so much, and he, he got this and he got that. I can't wait to see him mess up. But the God is the one who keeps us. And helps us, takes care of us, comes to see about us. Oh, do I have any witnesses in the room? We love the Lord today. We thank God for this day. And we want to say thank you to the youth department. They had a beautiful service on Friday. Thank uh, the youth leaders, uh, Mr. Rell and Sister Christian and Sister Kiki and all of you, you guys who put that on, I, I really appreciate that. It needs to be, I'm so glad that the youth department is vibrant and that y'all doing stuff. I'm trying to get that van together for y'all uh, so you can go around, move around. Uh, we're getting it together. I, I bought the van, y'all, and it costs $1,000 just for a windshield. 
I, I kept looking at the windshield kitty, and I said, hmm, I wonder why this man didn't get this windshield fixed. And I said, <laughs> I said, huh, this man ain't get this windshield fixed, Joe. I said, something must be going on. So I took it out there to the windshield place. And he said, oh, it's got this thing on there where it changed, like the lane changer is inside of it, so you have to recalibrate, and it's $450 just to recalibrate. I said, what are you telling me? You're going to charge $450 just to put a computer on there, and I'm not even using that thing? He said, well, that's, that's what, how I go. So, but we gonna, we gonna do what we gotta do. You know, sometimes you do what you gotta do. A lot of y'all, y'all complain a lot. I don't do that. When somebody tell me something costs more, I just say, well, Lord, you know, you gonna have to help me. Either they gonna have to get me, give me a deal. I was out of town, and I'm gonna go ahead and preach it a minute, y'all. I was out of town in Memphis at the convention, and when I bought the van, I took the van to get new tires, because I could tell it was shaking a little bit, and I ain't putting nobody, I ain't getting on the road with nothing shaking. I don't like nothing broke. I don't not like nothing that's shaky. So if I start fooling with you, that, you'll know why, because you're shaking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like, I don't like it. I don't like things that's shaky. I don't fool with shaky folk. I don't fool with shaky cars. If I think you shaky, I put you to the side. I'll put you on reserve, uh, Elder Goldie, when I think you shaky. And so it was shaking, and I took it in. So I left the dealer's place, y'all, took it directly to the tire place. And the man said, you got to have new tires all the way around. I said, oh, okay. So then I gave him the vehicle. He said, you know, this is Memphis. You got to be careful. I said, yeah, I know where I'm at. You know, I, I know this is Memphis. I just want to make sure I can get home. I don't want to be on the side of the road, and I don't want nobody else to be on the side of the road. He said, well, it going to cost you, you know, it was a little over $1,000 for tires. And, I, and then I left, and I called. And long story short, I told him, we, we are taxing them because that's for the church. And he said, oh, I wish you had have told me that because it was 5 o'clock on a Friday. So he couldn't do nothing about it because he would have had to call to the home office, y'all. And I said, oh, God. I said, well, just tell me so I know, uh, Elder Cozy, how much was the taxes? He said it was over $100 just for taxes. I said, oh, God. And in my, in my mind, I'm going to pick it up, y'all, and I'm thinking all the time, I got to go ahead and pay this. Other child. I said, I'm going to have to go ahead and pay it. I don't have no choice. I, I forgot to tell him. He says, nothing I can do about it now because I could have called the home office. So I said, well, okay, we'll just go ahead and we'll go through with it. So I got to the, got to the place to pick everything up. And he said, you know what? He said, you know, this is for the church. He said, and you know what I'm going to do? He said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, there was some kind of discount he had you know, as the manager, because I was talking to the manager. And he said, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. He said, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. And, and it, took the, it took the tax off. But the person that came in before Sister Rashida had cussed him out. But I didn't go in there cussing. I go in and went in there acting like I had some sense. Now, I might not have none this morning. But while I was writing the check, I had some sense, y'all. And God was able to bless me. See, and sometimes, if you just act like you got a little sense, look at the person next to you. Tell him, uh, tell him, say, if he, you act like you got a little sense, Elder Kenny, the Lord will bless you. Oh, yes, he will. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yes, Lord. And so the Lord blessed me, and I got the tax off the top. So we'll get the, get the van running as soon as we can. I want to thank God for the praise team. Y'all get a praise team in hand. Thank God for the Facebook people that's listening. If you're listening by Facebook, I enjoy uh, Sister uh, Alexis. I enjoy Sister Alexis this morning. Alexis, you reminded me why I do this. A lot of times I'd be ready, and Lord, I'm retired. I'm getting out. Of it. I'm getting out. Lord, I'm getting out. If you just give me a minute, <laughs> Lord, if you just open the door, Lord, if you open the door, I'm getting out. And then it reminds me when you got up. It reminds me of why 
we do this. We do this for souls, y'all. So that people will be saved and so that they'll be able to progress in the Lord. That's why we do this. We don't do this just so people will know how great we are and we can lay hands on people and they can fall out. That's all great. That's all fantastic. But the reason why we do it is so that elderly should people be saved and we can watch them grow. Well, for a pastor, it's nothing better than to see people grow. It's just like a teacher. It's just like a teacher, Pastor Darby. When the teacher sees that the student is getting it, oh my God. Sister Rashida, your brain, you just smile. When you see that student is catching the lessons, like they're getting it. They're going to get it. They're going to get out of this class, even if they do get a C or a D. They're getting out of this class. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We love the Lord today. We're going to go to Genesis, the fourth, Genesis, the fourth chapter. Genesis, the fourth chapter. And Genesis, we know, is the book of beginnings. Book of beginnings. Book of beginnings. Genesis, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading. Uh, I'm going to read. I'll read because I want to make sure I catch my verses right. The third, I'm going to start reading at the third verse. This is in the New International Version. I'm reading in the New International Version this morning, if that's all right. If that's all right, I want to make sure. Tell somebody, say, you got to master the door. Tell them one more time, say, you got to master the door. And then tell them, say, keep the door closed. See, some of us need to master the door, and some of us need to keep the door closed. I, 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 if you have it, say amen. amen. Genesis, the fourth chapter, and reading at the third verse. Let me make sure I got it. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. So we know that the fat portions, if you read your Bible when you're at home and you study a little bit, you find out that the fat portions was the best part of the sheep. The fat portions was what belonged to the Lord. And, you know, they, here we have one bringing one kind of offering and one bringing another. You Here you see two different. One man is a man of faith. And one man is a man of flesh. One man is a man of faith who is able and we see one man moving in the flesh. Doing what they want to do. Cain did what he wanted to do. And Abel did what the Lord said do. Fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering... He did not look with favor. So the Lord was disturbed. He said, well, you know, you didn't bring what I told you to bring. Like he tell a lot of us, we, God tell us to do one thing and we do something else. Or we do what we want to do. Like we always do. And then when God don't bless us, we, well, Lord, I don't understand why you didn't bless. Well, you didn't do what I told you to do. See, and when you do what I told you to do, I bless you. So then it says after that, it says, but... On Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. So he was very upset. He was disturbed. He, he, he was disturbed because God didn't receive his offering. And in those times, what that means is if when God didn't receive the offering, what would happen is fire would come from heaven and burn up the, all the offering. It would burn up the offering. It would burn up the altar. It would even burn up the rocks. If they had rocks in there, the fire from heaven would come and burn up everything, which is a, a symbol of how we ought to be a sacrifice. We ought to be burned up. Present your body, what? A living sacrifice. Holy and what? Acceptable. Because this, you can guess what, this is your reason. To present your body for you to be all burnt up and for you not to have yourself in there, that's the least you could do. 
That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that's the least you could do. So the fire didn't come down for Cain. The fire came down for Abel because Abel did what God said do. See, and if when you're obedient, you do what God is telling you to do, and you always hear people say, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why things are going wrong. Did you check with God? Did you check with him? Did you check to see? Did you do what he told you to do and how he told you to do it and when he told you to do it? Because if you do what God tells you to do, you will be acceptable. Your countenance will be one of happiness or gladness because you know you did what God told you to do. And then it says here, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you, ang why are you angry? Why? <laughs> why? The Lord is saying to somebody this morning, why are you disturbed because you don't have no money? Why are you disturbed? Why, why you think things are going wrong in your household and you keep cussing at people? I told you to stop. Told you to stop doing what you're doing. Told you to bring me a proper sacrifice. I told you to do what's right. Why are you uh, asking me what's wrong and you know what's wrong? Why are you angry? Why are you mad? Why are you disturbed? All you got to do is be obedient and things will go good for you. All you got to do is be obedient and you'll get some peace. All you got to do is be obedient. All you got to do is do what I told you to do. And he said that, so Cain was, and then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face down? Why is your head hung down? Why are you looking all sad so people can be sympathetic toward you? Say, oh, don't he look, don't Elder Kenny look so sorry on his face. But he wasn't obedient. I'm not talking about Elder Kenny now. But I'm talking about some of you. Have not been obedient. That's why your face is looking down. That's why you said, oh, it's quiet in here. I haven't even got to my good verse yet, y'all. <laughs> now I'm getting to, this is, the, this is our, text, our, our key verse for the day. If you do what is right, somebody say, if you do what is right. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you do what's right. If you do what I told you to do, if you be obedient, if you lift me up and give me the glory and not take the glory for yourself, if you treat your wife like I told you to treat her, if you treat your husband like I told you to treat her, if you do your kids right, listen, bring your kids up right. If you do what is right, you will be accepted, which means I will bless you. You don't have to worry about my blessing. My blessing will be on you. The curses won't be on you. The blessing will be in your house. The blessing will be on your job. If you stop uh, grumbling at the job, you know, some people, when they talk to their boss, uh, Elder, uh, uh, Elder William, they the Pastor William, they don't, they don't say stuff in front of the boss's face, but they go behind his back and talk behind his back and say stuff, and they don't know that it's getting to him because he got a mole. Y'all know what I'm... Any, okay, y'all don't know this, and then I'm finished reading my... Any good supervisor that's worth his weight at all, he always have a mole. And you may be saying stuff, real, because you got workers. And you, you, they, you may be, you know, saying, oh, uh, Johnny, go do X and Y, and then you know that Johnny, why you, when you leave, he's not actually working. He's standing around. He's talking, talking to the other workers from the other places. He's not getting nothing done. When you come back, he say, he make up an excuse on why he couldn't get the work done that you told him to get done. And then not only is he doing that, he's talking behind your back. So you have a mole. And the mole's job is to bring information back to the boss. And when the boss find out what you're doing, he say, oh, okay. And then he just put a little mark by your name. Yep, they still talking, still saying stuff. And a good boss won't just get rid of you. Some of them, some of them, they, as soon as they find out you ain't with their program, they gets rid of you. If y'all want somebody in here wondering why your hours got short. <laughs> I don't know why they took me off the schedule. Oh, who is that? I'm talking to somebody this morning. 
I don't know why they took me off the schedule. You know, Brother Pastor, I can't pay my tithes this week because they took me off the schedule. They shortened my hours. I was working, I was working 40 hours a week. Do you not know I'm only working 20 now? And they put the schedule out for two weeks, and the next week I'm working 10. That's because that man don't want to see you. That woman don't want to see you. They tired of your foolishness. They got a job to do. The supervisor's job is to get the job done or they going to get fired. We trying to work here. We, we brought you here. Yes, we paying you, but we didn't bring you here just to give you a check. We expect something to get done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So next time you get something done on your job, go to the supervisor and say, I got it done. Praise the Lord. What's next? What do you need me to do? See, but most of us, that's too good for us. That's, that's too much like right. We got to talk behind the people's back. See, but they got a mold, and they watching you. See, your name is on the list. So it says here, it says, uh, it says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin, somebody say sin. Sin, sin is crouching at your door. <laughs> sin is lurking. Sitting at the door. Somebody say close the door. Then somebody ought to say don't open the door. Don't, nope, nope, don't open that, don't open that door. Don't open that door because there's something on the other side of that door. And you know, a door is an exit and for entrance and exit. He didn't say window. See, window, especially at that time, see, we got different doors now. The doors is different than they was then. Now we got the door with the little peephole. And you can see who out there, y'all. See, but back then, it was a solid thing. And for you to find out who was out there, you who is it? Who is that? See? And then it says, sin. That's who it is. And so he didn't say window, because window you could see through the window or the uh, opening who it was. But he said door. And, and the door, there's sin on the other side of the door. And I began to thinking about that. And I was thinking about it for days. And I, I said, well, okay, first lady, wait a minute. It says here, it says that sin is crouching at your door. And then the rest of the verse says, it desires to have you. So sin is on the other side of the door and it's trying to get you. Sin on the other side of the door after you. It's after somebody. It ain't after me, after you. Whatever that is that you're dealing with is on the other side of the door waiting on you. And then it says, it desires to have you, but you must what? Rule over it. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. That don't make sense. How you going to master sin? That makes no sense. It don't make sense uh, for it to say you master sin. So I kept going over and over it. And, and then the Lord spoke to me and he said, no, it's not talking about you mastering sin because you can't master sin. Sin is unruly. It, it, it's out of control. You know, once, once, sin get, once, once it gets you to cross over into the threshold, it got you. You got to ask the Lord for help to try to get out. See, some of the stuff, and, and I tell young people all the time, and then I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. A lot of times the devil will make things look a certain way to you, and you don't really know what it is till you get on the other side of it. Young people don't understand. He said, oh, go ahead and smoke this and go ahead and drink this. And, oh, it'll be all right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I remember having a long discussion with my dad, Bishop. We sat down at the table, and he was trying to explain to me. He was like, you need to stop smoking weed. And I said to him, I said, well, ain't nothing wrong with it. Oh, my God. What did I say that for? This is when I was still living with him. I was still living Listen, y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying. I was living in his house at that time. 
What did I say that for? I thought he was going to go nuts and ballistic. He didn't. We sat down and had a long discussion. And I said to him, I said, ain't nothing wrong with it. He said, yeah, there is something wrong with it. He, and, and I kept telling him, I said, it ain't no worse than a lot of these other things. But what we don't understand a lot of times is it can be something wrong with it for you. For you, for you, the thing that look like it ain't nothing wrong with, it could be something wrong with because you not, might not be able to get out. Praise the Lord anyhow. We get into things that we may not be able to get out of and see, we don't understand it. Some things God is telling us to leave alone. Some people, God will tell us to leave them alone because they'll get us into something that we can't get out of. See, and God know it. See, and you, you hear men say all the time, I don't understand why men like men. It don't make sense to me. I don't understand. I see two men kissing. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong? <laughs> y'all watch, y'all seeing it too. I don't understand it. I see two women kissing and I don't understand it. I don't understand. That'll never be me. Hmm. Really? Really? It's some people out here that you ain't even met. That you don't know nothing about. And thank God that you ain't never seen. Make you lose your wife, your kids, your job, your mind, and everything. And you say, oh, I never thought that that would happen to me. Well, it's out there. And you can believe what you want to believe. I'm telling you what I know. See, so never say what you wouldn't do. It's just the grace of God that you had. You didn't, he, kept, he kept you. It's just the grace of God that you didn't. So when, if, if you see somebody else and, you know, whatever you're thinking about them, you just thank God that you where you at. You thank God that he saved you one day. You thank God that he set you aside. You thank God that he brought you out and took you out of the government and didn't let that happen to you. And you didn't go down and you didn't die without knowing him. See, because you never know what you get involved in. Some people say, you know, you see a woman and, you know, the man slap upside the head and or the other way around, the woman slapping him upside the head, you say, oh, well, I wouldn't take that. I ain't going to never stay with nobody that's going to be doing me like that. You don't know what you do. Because a lot of times when you get involved with people, what happens is you got your whole life tied up. Your whole life is tied up. Your bank accounts is getting money out the same bank account. Your money, your house, everything is tied up. If you leave, you got to leave everything. See, people don't, don't recognize that they just talking. You know, it's easy. Talk is cheap. It's easy to say, oh, well, I walk away. I'm going to walk away when this happens. No, it ain't all that easy to walk away. And it ain't just about love. You got kids, you got children involved, you got a lot involved. So when you say something, you got to make sure that the Lord just didn't um, let you fall into that. You got your own problems, you got your things you're going through, but that may not be one of them. And because you ain't in the women's shelter don't mean that you look down on somebody that is. That was a tough decision that somebody had to make to leave their home. To walk away, walk out into the cold by themselves. Some people walked out in the cold with nothing but the clothes on their back. See, and you didn't have to do that. So praise God. Thank him. Thank God for how he set you, you know, he gave you somebody decent. Some of us got somebody decent and we don't appreciate it. But that's all right. So it says that seeing this question at the door, it desires to have you. But you must rule over it, meaning you must control the door. So I said, mm, I got to that. I said, you must control the door. I said, Lord, you must control the door. What is you, what are you trying to tell? Spirit, what is you saying to me? I'm a, he said, your emotions is the door. And you got to, if you see here, it says that Cain was what? He was what? Angry. 
And his anger is what opened the door. See, anger can be blinding. For those who you got that get angry spirits and you get angry a lot, you got to watch yourself. You got to ask God to fix that because you'll get blinded. Anger is blinding. You can't hear the spirit when anger comes. Anger come and blind everything. You can't see nothing. And I told y'all this story before. The man, I, I've had six Mercedes. I stopped buying them now because you got to buy foreign parts for them. And, you know, you got to take it to the dealer once a year. Pastor Darvell, no. And Elder Goldie, no. You got to take it to the dealer once a year. And they got to do this overhaul on it. And it used to cost 300 It's probably 500 now that you got to have it done. And then the, one, the ones that I had had special tires on them. And you had to buy, uh, each tire was addressed to a certain, and you couldn't just take a tire because it was bad and put it on the back. It don't work like that on Mercedes. If the tire go bad, you got to buy a tire for that particular spot. And each tire was four or $500. And so I said, well, Lord, I'm going to go to something else because I like Cadillac, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do that because I done done this six times. Six times. Six times I done did this, so I'm going to go to something else. But the very first one I got, I remember getting in and I sat in it and first lady was with me and the lady said, uh, go ahead and, you know, you just go ahead and drive. And then at the time, y'all, I was driving, uh, I think I was driving a Maxima. And I loved that Maxwell. I was just zooming up and down the road. You know, it was fast, and I was moving. And so I said, well, I'm going to go look. She said, I got a car here. I want you to come look at it. So I went and looked at it. I was like, oh, this is a Mercedes. No, nah, this is out of my class. I don't want that, you know, because, you know, I ain't ready, you know. First lady said, the lady said, drive it. I said, no, I don't need to drive it. See, I ain't like a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all got appetite problems. <laughs> Let me tell you what an appetite problem is. Deacon Joe, everything you see, you want. But you see, sometimes your stu your stomach is bigger than your stomach is bigger than what you can handle. Y'all ever heard about that? Y'all, it's rare y'all hear me say, "Oh, that's so nice." You're not gonna hear me, mm -mm, cause I know on the other side of that, somebody gotta pay for it, and they ain't gonna be me. So the lady said, go ahead and drive it, y'all. And I said, no, I don't think I need to do that. I don't need to drive. As a matter of fact, I ain't even looking for no car. I got a car. My car is great. <laughs> Elder Thelma, and she said, no, this is glorious. Some of y'all know glorious. I said, okay. I'm, I, I, I said, uh, first, no, first lady said, you need to drive it. She was with me. and She said, you need to drive it. Drove the car, y'all, rode down the street. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord said, this your car. I broke out in tears. I brought the car back. I said, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Let's Come on, let's go ahead and do it. So we went ahead and bought that one. So um, the story that I'm going to tell y'all is I, I left the dealer, and when I finally picked up the car and they got it all cleaned up, y'all know how they do it when you get a new car. They clean it up for you. They put gas in it. I don't know if they do that no more. That must have been the old day. No, they still do that at Mercedes, don't they, Elder Gold? That Mercedes, they still do that. They believe in customer service, y'all. And I'm almost done. You go, and they do everything. They give you a little glass of water, and in the city, they give you a glass of wine. If you want some wine, they ask you if you want some wine while you're waiting on your car, and all that. You want some coffee? Do you want a soda? All of that stuff. Yeah, because I, I, I went to St. Louis, took my car, and they said, look, what do you want? You want some wine? You want, you want some? I was like, no, nah, man, just bring that car on out of here. Have me up in here drunk. Next thing you know, I've been paid too much. So anyway, I, they cleaned it up for me, got the car all clean, right? And then uh, I brought the car to town, had first lady in the car. We riding, y'all. It's my first time around. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to ride. My Mercedes all over town. A man rode up at a stop sign. I was at a stop sign. He, 
He come on the other side of the stop sign on the where the other cars is coming this way. And I'm the traffic is going this. He comes on the other side, roll down the window, and spit on my car. Yes. And I was a preacher at the time. I said, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I said, I'm going to kill him. First lady, I, didn't I say it out loud? I think I said it out loud. I don't remember. It was bad. It was bad, y'all. It was bad. He tried to get away. And he rolled down the street. And I chased him. All around campus, I chased, I chased this car, y'all. All around case, because I was going to get out. All I could see was red. I was going to get out of that car, and I was going to open his door and snatch him out of there and beat him to his mama didn't recognize him. That's all I could see is me snatching him out of the car, y'all. This was what was on my mind, going through my head. I wasn't thinking about Jesus. I wasn't thinking about the church. I wasn't even thinking about first day. First day, slow down, slow down. You scared me. You scared me. I said, don't even worry about it. Because when I catch him, he, he, finna, he, finna, he finna get this. He gonna take all of this. And so I kept riding around. And, and then after he, he broke a few stop signs because he saw me chasing him. And then something came over me made me stop. I know it was the Lord. Broke that. Pastor Darville broke that anger spirit, broke it. And I was able to get out of that space. Y'all don't understand that those of y'all that get angry, you know what I'm talking about. You get out of that space where you come back to yourself. And I said, oh man, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? It was just the grace of God that kept me. And then come to find out, I found out later on who the man was later. Because, you know, that, it wasn't over. <laughs> it wasn't over. <laughs> it wasn't going to be over until I find out who you are. Because I come on your job looking for you saying, well, hey, what's up? <laughs> and come to find out the man was a professor at the university. And I don't know why he did it. But once I found that out, I was like, no, I can't go out there and beat him out there because if I do that, there's too many of y'all work out there. Too many people at that time from Saints was working out there, and they see me beating on that man out there. That probably wouldn't go over too well. So I left it alone, but he was going to get it. But I said that to y'all to say this. You never know. A lot of times when you get to the door, what's on the other side? See, but the enemy knows what's on the other side. And the enemy will lie to your mind and talk to you and say, oh, you're going to get away with this or this or that. David, when he saw Bathsheba, his emotions got away from him. His emotions got, his emotions got away from him. He followed his emotions and he didn't follow the Lord. He was supposed to be, he's supposed to have been somewhere else. See, but he ended up messing up because he followed his emotions. Your emotions is what controls that door. You must ask God to help you stay in control. Sometimes we sympathetic with people. And you have sympathy on people. But even being sympathetic can take you to the wrong place. Can take you somewhere that God wouldn't have you to be. Some of us have fear on the inside of us. Some of our, us have anxiety. We get anxious, too anxious. And God says, you have to be careful that your emotions don't take you on the other side of that door. Because there is something that's waiting on you that is not in faith. And we know that if we're not walking in faith, we're walking in fear. We walk by the Spirit. We walk by the what? We walk by the spirit and not after this flesh. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't go by what we see because we know we have to go walk by our spiritual eyes. So here at the end of this verse, and I'm just about done, says here it says, 
But you must rule over it. You must have control over your emotions. Your emotions must be controlled. You can't just be out here saying and doing stuff, saying and doing what you want to say. The door is an entrance and an exit. And we got to make sure that if we go on the other side of that door, that we got ourselves together. Yeah. Must control that door. Look at somebody say, be in control of your emotions. Let's read Galatians 5 and 22, and then I'm going to let you go. Elder Delisha, I want you to read that for me. This is our last verse, and then I'm going to pray for some of y'all, and then we're going to... 5 and 22, read 22 and 23. Yeah, that's fine. 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, uh -huh. joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm. Against such things there is no law. So, so is that the end of that verse? Is that the end of that verse? Yes, sir. There is no, and I, and I almost, I wrote down in my notes that the fruit of the spirit is almost like being a vegetarian. You can eat as much of that as you want. You can walk in love as much as you want. And there's no repercussions. That's what that's saying. For these things that you see up here, if you walk in, there is no repercussions. Because you walk in, when you walk here, you're walking by faith. You're walking by the spirit. But when you walk in your emotions, sometimes I say when I walk in my emotions, there's always repercussions for being emotional. And if you're too emotional, you're going to have to see Dr. Christian. But there's always repercussions for walking in your emotion and how you feel. Well, this is how I feel. Well, the spirit don't ain't concerned about how you feel. The spirit is concerned about what the word say. And the word say love them that hate you. When other people is hating you, you're supposed to love them. There is a remedy in the spirit for everything that happened in the natural. Oh, that's free right there. There is a remedy in the spirit for everything that happened in the natural. And if you don't believe it, the next time something natural happened to you, add the spirit, uh, 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 call on the spirit and ask him what to do. And he'll show you. Stand to your feet. I hope that was good for you. I hope that was good for you. I hope you take it in. Look at somebody and tell them, say, take it in. Don't walk in your emotions. Walk after the spirit. Father God, we love you. We magnify you and lift you up. We thank you for another day. Oh God, touch us right now. We bind fear, anxiety, arrogance, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, touch your people. Help them to hide your word inside of your, their heart so they won't sin against you, oh God. We want to do what's right. We want to master the door, oh God. We want to have that enemy bound, oh God, in our lives so the spirit can have free course. Help us to be what you called us to be. Help us to do what you have said that we need to be doing. We want to be the ambassadors that you called us to be. Lord, we thank you for doing it. And we claim it as done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on. Give Jesus a hand clap. Now some of you, you may be seated, been struggling. You've been struggling with your emotions. You've been struggling. Walking in the spirit. If you've been listening by Facebook. We want to thank you for listening in. Hopefully, we said something to encourage you. And we want to remind you to what, saints? Have faith in God. Now, if you've been struggling, 
you've been struggling with Hello, family. We would like to thank you for your continued charitable support. If you would like to sow into the March of Faith Community Church, please note the following ways to give. One, mail contributions to P.O. Box 999, Carbondale, Illinois, 62903. Two, cash app to Midwest SG. Three, Venmo to Midwest SG. Thank you again, and may God bless you.